Well, thank you, Larry, for the opportunity of sharing the um, Florida OA event host items. This is going to be part one of a two part series. Um, special patches for special people. Uh, for section OA events in the state of Florida, we usually have two events a year. Uh, our annual conference, what everyone else in the world calls a conclave, uh, we've been having that every spring since 1945. Uh, we have a second event that is more of an educational and planning meeting event called the seminars. It's now known as the Section Leadership Summit. And since 1986, it also included the planning meeting of the Section Council of Chiefs to plan for the upcoming Section Conference. Now, in, in Florida, the lodge that is uh, running the event is referred to as the host lodge. It's service lodges in many other places, run the events, uh, do the service work, all the grunt work except you know, the actual program that is run by the section. Some sections also have a designation of staff members in which there are committees that run across all lodges in the section and provide labor uh, for those events in that way. Now, the reasons for creating host items. Um, I'm, I'm not familiar with what many sections out West may do, but in Florida, um, reasons for creating host events include identification, especially in the early years. Those that are wearing the host item can be immediately identified as a member of the host lodge and be able to assist those that are unfamiliar with the facilities. Um, host items are made for commemoration purposes. They mark the occasion of hosting an event that usually takes more than a year to plan before fruition and the work that goes along with that event. There's also service recognition, uh, which could also be called bribery. Uh, issues that are limited by the member completing a particular service requirement in support of the event. Some uh, service requirements vary between one for eight hours of service all the way up to one for 100 hours of service. Fundraising has become a big reason for host items because let's face it, selling things make money. And host lodges can make a lot of money, particularly if they have a lodge that's willing to buy a lot of things. We'll, we'll get to that. And then there's special patches for special people because sometimes being a member of the host lodge isn't special enough. There's a differentiation that I will make between some host items, uh, open versus hidden. Uh, rather self-explanatory, the open uh, designators are the ones that have the word host uh, right there on the uh, piece of memorabilia. There is no doubt that that is a host item. The hidden things don't have a clear designation. You have to know that, uh, the regular neckerchief is one color, the host is a different color. And the difference between that can be anywhere between $35 for a regular item and a $400 host item for the same event. And the only difference is color. All right, the first host item in Florida was for the 1967 area conference. Uh, it was just the neckerchief uh, issued by Ikali Kanan for their members. That would be Ikali Kanan 552. Uh, they made 25 neckerchiefs on orange cloth. They had 24 members that were hosting the event. Everyone got one and the last one was auctioned off. This is very hard to find. And the only difference is the uh, color of the cloth. Following year, uh, Timaquan 340 hosted. And once again, it was just the neckerchief on orange cloth. Uh, the fact that all the neckerchiefs had Timaquan uh, does not make each item a host item. Um, they just got away with putting their lodge name on the issue for the conference. But that was one per person, and the only difference is the color of the neckerchief cloth. There was no 1969 conference. 1970 and 71, there were no host items created for those conferences. In 1972, Alpatak created the first host flap in the state. Uh, there was a service requirement for this. 
Uh, there were 220 made, and this is still one of the most difficult host flaps in the state of Florida to receive or obtain. All right. 1973 was the big reorganization of the regions as well as the at the section level. In Florida, the section was expanded to bring in um, Similachi 239 out of Tallahassee and Ustaga 385 out of Pensacola, as well as Chiriqui in the Canal Zone. Timaquan hosted this event and they created two host items, uh, the, serv the workforce flap and the neckerchief. And again, the only difference between the regular and the host neckerchief is just the color of the cloth. But that was also one per person. In 1974, this was the last section conference where the host lodge did not make a flap. Their host item was a neckerchief on white cloth. Uh, Zimalachi put 50 of the neckerchief patches on white cloth as their host item. Now, the additional blue neckerchief at the bottom at the conferences in those early years, attendees were limited to buy one of each item and the conference was running short on neckerchiefs, about 80 of them. So the host lodge agreed to forego their members from buying the regular neckerchief and that they would order them after the conference. And when they did order them, 80 neckerchiefs came in on a light blue cloth. Now, some may consider this to be a host item uh, just for de facto purposes. They were the only ones that were able to get the light blue neckerchief. Um, it, it was, I don't consider it a host item. Uh, it was an accident that it was on the wrong cloth, but collect what you want. I'm, if you want to call it a host, it's a host. In 75, hosted by Tippesaw 326, host flap, host neckerchief, and now a new host pocket patch. In 1976, the section went all the way out to the panhandle for the conference, and Ustaga made one flap as their only host item. This was the only Florida section event to be held in the central time zone, um, and it was probably never going to happen again. Uh, the distance between Spanish Trails Scout Reservation in Defuniac Springs to Miami down in South Florida is over 600 miles. And to Fort Myers on the other side of the um, peninsula is 500 miles. And at the time, Interstates 10 running east-west and 75 north-south had not yet been completed. So traveling to that conference was a major commitment. Now, 1977, Seminole Lodge hosted the conference. You would not know it looking at their flap because they didn't put the name on it. Prior to the conference, uh, they had their planning meeting for the upcoming conference. Seminole gave every attendee a commemorative patch, as well as creating their own small patch for hosting the event. Attendees at the planning conference received one patch each as a gift. Now, they also made a host neckerchief of which there are two varieties. Um, and the only way that you can really tell the difference right away is to look at the back of the neckerchief. They had run out of regular, or they had run out of host neckerchiefs. So they took some out of the inventory uh, for the regular attendees and had the word host embroidered into it. Looking at the front of it, you need to have the two of them compared to each other uh, to see there's a slight difference in the color of the word host, maybe a little bit in the size of the letter, but the dead giveaway is the fact that it was embroidered through the back of the patch and the back of the cloth. 1978, uh, conference was hosted by a Chocolatey Lodge. They created only one item and you could get three of them for eight hours service each. 1979, conference was hosted by Oshaka Lodge. Uh, they created a flap. They had a host version of the regular conference patch with a maroon border that you could obtain by, conduct, uh, by contributing service to the event. This was another camp where it took commitment to go, particularly if you were a member of the host lodge. 
Uh, McGregor Smith Scout Reservation in Inverness is a good five hour drive from the middle of Oshaka's territory in Miami. So this wasn't just a trip to the camp and back. Now, what made things even more difficult for Oshaka was that South Florida Council was in major financial straits that year. They were on a list of councils where no patches were, would be made unless the cash was delivered up front. So there, was no, there were no host flaps there at the conference. Conference was held in April and the flaps were delivered in May. And when the flaps arrived at the council office, someone looked at them and said, oh, patches, let's send them up to summer camp and sell them out of the trading post. So 220 flaps were sent to the trading post with instructions, make sure they are all sold by the end of summer camp. We do not want any leftover merchandise. So if you were attending summer camp that year, if you weren't in the OA or if you were a member of another lodge, you could buy that flap. Many members of the host lodge never received it. Tippesaw again hosted the conference in 1980. Uh, there are varieties in the flap um, based on the color of the border. That's one of those where you really need to put the two of them together to make sure that you have both. Um, there was a host pocket patch created for the lodge and another 50 of them were made uh, with the word host in white that were designated for the lodge executive committee. Other members of the lodge, their version was the word host in orange. And for the executive committee version, that was added after production. Alpita again hosted in 1981 and expanded the uh, product line for hosting the conference. They had their one flap, and then they had two more pocket patches, uh, one for special recognition with the gold arrow, and one uh, with a silver mylar arrow for 40 hours of service. And the, uh, the red arrow version is there for comparison purposes. It doesn't designate that it's a host item, but it was created just for the host lodge. The neckerchief is the same as that for the attendee, except it's on yellow cloth. 1982, Timaquan created or hosted again, uh, and they created two flaps, one for service and one for even more service. Uh, difference is just green and gold mylar. In 1983, Achakati hosted, and depending on how you really uh, look at patches, they had one host flap, but three varieties of them. For this, you really need to put the three together in order to tell the difference in the dark purple versus blue along the bottom of the flap. Even today, these are very hard to find. If you are trying to complete your set of host items, many people believe you have to have one of each. And so the price of these is very expensive. 1984, Ikali Ikanen has another opportunity to host a conference. They had one flap, but two varieties. And the differences are, the, the, the big difference is the color uh, shade of orange for the sun. Uh, some differences in the thickness of the letters. Their host neckerchief does not have anything designating it as a host other than the fact that it's on green cloth. And they had a host hat pin. Attendees for the conference received a patch that was on twill cloth. Uh, there wasn't enough patches to go around. So again, um, Ikali Ikanen, um said that they would hold off on their patches and they would order them afterwards. But what they ordered was fully embroidered with many other features that they really wanted on the patch in the first place. So that is more of a host patch than say the light blue neckerchief from 1974. Uh, the changes in the design were consciously ordered to be like that. 1985, for uh, beginning for three years of calling the event the Conclave. It just didn't sit well with a lot of old timers. Similachi hosted this conference and the flap that they received, they hated. It was not what they wanted. Design was terrible, construction was terrible, and it was returned. 
the vendor, not wanting to lose any money, went off and distributed those patches as samples. So those patches are out there. They're not an official issue of Semilachi 239. When they reordered the correct version, it, it looks a little better. They had a host neckerchief, which is in the dark blue cloth as compared to the regular attendee with the light blue. And that's the only difference between the two. 1986, Seminole, or yes, 1986, Seminole 85 hosted the conference. Uh, they had one flap with two varieties. Uh, the difference is the shade of orange in the sky. In 1987, Oshotka hosted a section conference and created one host item, a single flap. Yes, it is possible to host a conference and make only one thing. And those of you familiar with Florida can probably see the punchline that's coming. In 1988, Alpata hosted the conference again. Uh, this time they had two flaps, one of which was for regular purchase at three, four, five dollars, whatever the going price was. The other one was $25 a piece. Uh, there was a guide armband. And once again, there were two, uh, I'm sorry, three pocket patches that were created uh, to go along with the regular pocket patch for the conference. Um, the white, where it says uh, host in white was one per person. Uh, the silver mylar was one for eight hours of service. And the gold mylar arrow was one for 40 hours of service. 1989 and 1990 were pretty stable. One flap, one pocket patch, one neckerchief. Nothing really rare. These, these are not hard to get. Um, and they, they stayed in control when they created their host items. They didn't go nuts. Osceola Lodge had an opportunity to host a conference for the first time in 1991. Some of these images are not coming up uh, that showed greater detail, but I can describe them that they had three different flaps, one with a gray border, which was completely unrestricted. Uh, they had a silver mylar border with eight hours of service and one with a gold mylar border for 18 or for 16 hours of service. Now, we had someone who was a friend to many collectors in the section who was the trading post advisor for that conference. And while going through the gray bordered host flaps, he found one that had a brown turban band. They were all supposed to be gray. And then he found another and another. He found 50 of them with a brown turban band. And he made sure that his friends were taken care of. Uh, there are varieties of the gray border and the silver mylar border uh, with a different shade in the face and a different shape of the eye. But the brown border or the brown turban band is very hard to find. The regular conference patch was a uh, seminal jacket. The host version included the skirt to go along with that jacket. And then the host neckerchief was the regular neckerchief with the word host in the design. Now, beginning in 1991 was the first host item for the section seminars. And that was hosted by Tippesaw, just an adaptation of the regular seminars patch design. 1992, the conference was hosted for the, uh, by Akali Akanen. It was the last event that they had hosted. Um, they had two different flaps. Uh, the multicolored border were two varieties that are noticeable in the shade of blue that's used on the border. And then they had a gold mylar border version. The pocket patch for hosting was just adding the word host to the, the regular design. Someone on the medical staff for the conference created an unofficial armband uh, for their little committee. They also had a host neckerchief, but they didn't get around to ordering it until well after the conference. And there's a story behind that. As it has been told to me, these were ordered from National in the fall of 1992, well after the conference. And when they came in, they were found to be silk screened, which was not what the lodge wanted. But the paperwork had been approved by the professional that had placed the order, even though it wasn't what they wanted. 
uh, there was arguing back and forth between the professional and national until someone pointed out that national, when they did the silk screen, used the wrong year in the design. They used 1993, it should have been 1992. And at that point, national said, okay, send them all back, we'll remake the order, we'll make it embroidered. And that professional returned all but seven of the neckerchiefs. Uh, several years later, five of them uh, were sold on eBay. In 1993, there was yet another reorganization of nationals, regions, and sections. Florida became section S4. Uh, and we brought in Southern Georgia, which included Pitlaco 229, Immokalee 353, and Alapaha 545. Uh, which was the reason why the conference theme that year was widen the circle. Uh, Chockety that year created just a host flap and a host pocket patch. Seminars that year was just a single pocket patch uh, from Timaquan 340. Similachi 239 hosted the conference in 1994 with a host flap, a host pocket patch, and two host neckerchiefs. Uh, one on blue, which was unrestricted to everybody in the lodge. Uh, and then the white one had a service requirement and it was one per person. Seminars that year were hosted by Osceola 564 and they had no host items and there was much rejoicing. 1995, Seminole hosted the section conference, just a flap, a neckerchief and a pocket patch. There was a quirk in the scheduling during those mid 90s years where a lodge would host the seminars in November and then host the conference the following year. So Oshaka hosted the seminars in 1995 and it was the same design as the regular attendee patch with the word host on it. It may be hard to tell on your screens, but host is in gold mylar on the Indian's head. Uh, a note to uh, patch designers, gold mylar on a white background does not look good. Remember when I said that it was possible to, to host a conference and issue only one thing? Well, here's what Oshaka did in 1996 when they hosted the conference. That's five flaps, two pocket patches, two armbands, four neckerchiefs, three chenilles, a pin and a slide. And you may also notice there's two different designs that are being used for all these host items. Well, some of them have to do with the fact that that year, Oshaka 265 had dancers as their theme for their weekend event patches. And for each weekend, they created at least one flap and a matching pocket patch for it. So many of the host items reflected that same theme. While the conference itself used a Native American with the, uh, with the heron flying by, and that was used for other host items. Now, here's where we get into where the special people are and what they get rewarded with. The felt dancer flap and the pocket patch were sold as a set. Uh, they made 500 of those. There were additional flaps that were sold uh, loosely, not part of a certificate. The embroidered dancer was for those that gave 50 hours of service. They were given one and then they could buy five more. The tan bordered fully embroidered was unrestricted. The gold mylar version of that one was for those that did 24 hours or 25 hours of service. They were given one and then they could buy five more. The heron design which there were two flaps, the one with felt clouds were for special workers for the conference and 75 of those were made. The ones with the embroidered clouds were for conference chairmen and advisors of which there were a hundred flaps made. And the four neckerchiefs, you had the unrestricted dancer with a silver mylar border, or, or I'm sorry, that should be a silver mylar border, not tan border. You also had a dancer with a gold mylar border patch that was on a full cloth, uh, full square cloth. 
you had the heron design and the heron design was um let me back up a second the unrestricted flap or unrestricted neckerchief was the first of them then there was n31 it was issued one per person for host members that actively worked on the conference committee. N32 with the gold mylar border was issued just after the conference, 75 of them made on full cloth, uh, mostly went to the trading post committee. And then you had N36, which was the dancer design for 100 hours of service. Now, you may be asking, why is there a jump from N32 to N36? This uh, dancer with 100 hours came out after the national conference. And that year, Oshaka created three neckerchiefs for NOAC. The three chenilles, there was the tan background or the, uh, the, the tan fabric that was unrestricted at $25 a piece. The purple was originally one per person at 25 a piece. Uh, that changed once they needed to really sell through them, and then you could buy extras. And then the suede chenille was for special workers of which 75 were made. The difference in the two armbands, uh, there was a one for conference committee members that had host on it. Uh, and then the second one was for lodge uh, campsite rangers. These would be the people that would be staying in the campsite with the uh, visiting lodge, uh, taking care of the amenities, the coffee, the water, uh, trash uh, being a guide. Uh, that was the purpose of the second armband. Uh, there was a host slide and I also included uh, one of the chapters in Oshaka, the chapter in the Keys made a host ribbon and gave them out to their members and friends. The seminars in 1996 were hosted by Pithlaco. Uh, their camp was very small and even for such a small event, it's unlikely that the facilities could host such an event. So it was held out at the King's Base submarine base. They created two flaps. The red border was unrestricted. The silver mylar border was five per host lodge member, but they made 300 of each. And then they had a host pocket patch that resembled uh, that for the event. Alpata again hosted in 1997 uh, with three host flaps, varieties of each one having to do with the shade of blue for the lettering. Uh, the purple border was, uh, the difference between the three of them, the purple border was $3. The uh, turquoise border, $10. And the gold mylar border, $30. No service requirements. The service requirements came with the arrowhead pocket patches. Uh, one per person, uh, gold mylar was one for eight hours, silver mylar was one for 16 hours. They also had a patch that was meant to go on an armband. I, I've seen the patches, I have not seen anything with an armband on it. Uh, the food services committee created their own patch. And there were two different host neckerchiefs. Uh, the one with the patch on cloth was sold to lodge members completely unrestricted. The one with the direct embroidery into the cloth was given as a recognition to workers after the conference. Uh, between the 1997 conference and seminars was a reorganization of the sections within Southern Region again. And Florida expanded upward, uh, bringing in Tomachichi 119 out of Savannah and Echaconi 358 out of Macon. So the section ran all the way from Macon down to Miami. Uh, at the seminars, uh, the design reflected the new map of the section, and it was just one host item uh, created by a Chocotty 200. Tipisaw again hosted in 1998, uh, one host flap, but varieties with the border color. There was a host pocket patch, a host chenille, and a host neckerchief. The seminars that year were hosted by Seminole 85, which was uh, Gulf Ridge Council. Gulf Ridge Council has two properties. Uh, they decided not to hold the seminars at either of the properties, and instead it was held at McDill Air Force Base, home of Central Command. They had a flap and a pocket patch. 
Osceola hosted in 1999 and decided that they needed four flaps. The silver mylar border went with the silver mylar border pocket patch as a two piece set. Those were unrestricted. Uh, the tan border and the turquoise border had service requirements and the gold mylar border was strictly for conference committee chairman and advisors. Uh, they also issued a pocket patch, or I'm sorry, a jacket patch and a host chenille and a host neckerchief. Now the section seminars in 1999 were hosted by Alapaha, probably one of the smallest lodges to ever be in the Florida section. They didn't have a camp of their own. They had to hold the event at a church camp outside Valdosta. They only had 39 members of the host lodge there, and yet they issued so many things for running the event. You had the red bordered host patch. Later in the weekend, they came out with the orange bordered host patch. Uh, the red ones were sold on Friday night. Orange came out on Saturday afternoon. There was a gold mylard border that was given to section officers and advisors. Silver mylar was for uh, a reward for lodge workers. They also had other patches for people that were brought in from other lodges to help with the event. Uh, you had one that was uh, white bordered staff. Uh, security had their own patch. This was, uh, many of those members were from the uh, Georgia Brigade that provided security for national conferences during that time. And then the trading post had to have their own patch. And that's where we stop at the close of 1999. Next week, we will pick up with 2000. Let me point out that uh, Alapaha had a come to Jesus meeting on Saturday with a lodge <laughs> advisor and a section advisor because technically a host lodge is not supposed to make a profit from hosting an event. But when they came out with that many patches, it was a surprise to the section leadership. 